Hello, I'm back with another SQL tutorial and this time I'm going to talk about SOS scheduler yield weight type. Now this video is not about general introductions to weight type. In this channel you can search uh, on the keyword weight type and you'll get a lot of videos. So watch that first to get an introduction about SQL Server weight type, weight time, weighting resources, weight, uh, weights and queues and a lot of all that stuff. In this video and in this demo, I'm specifically going to show you the SOS scheduler yield weight type and most importantly, this weight type does not show up in SysDMOS weighting tasks DMV. Now what I mean by that is SQL Server gives you two important DMVs, the weighting task DMV, which is like a real time DMV showing you all the weight types your current ongoing threads are encountering. It's great for real time troubleshooting. The other DMV is SysDMOS weight stats, which gives you a lot of aggregated instance wide historical information about all the weight types that have been encountered and their wait time and signal wait time, wait count, so on and so forth. So one DMV, the waiting task is the real time DMV and the other one weight stats is more historical and aggregated instance wide information about weight types. Now, most weight types that we deal with on day to day basis, they show up in waiting task DMV, which is the real time DMV. But SOS schedule yield is one of the exceptions that I know of does not show up in waiting task DMV. And this video is all about that. So let's go to the background and understand why this does not show up. Your query that's running in SQL Server um, needs at least one thread. So when that thread is scheduled on a shed scheduler, which is the processor, it's executing and it gets a quantum of four milliseconds. This is hard coded and cannot be changed. What do I mean by the quantum of four milliseconds, which means that thread will run for four milliseconds and then back off by giving chance and opportunity for other threads to come and run on the CPU. This is also called as cooperative multitasking. So in more simpler words, the thread is assigned to the scheduler, it runs for four milliseconds and can do whatever it wants and then backs off. And while it's quantum of four millisecond is being renewed, other threads come in and they run and they all, they too also run for four milliseconds and back off again. And this is the time slice constantly happening on the schedulers. When your thread is backing off after four milliseconds of execution, because it has to wait for its turn again. It immediately goes back to the runnable queue and it has to wait for its turn again. It has to register a wait type and that wait type is SOS scheduler yield. Now the biggest question is why it does not show up in SysDMOS waiting task real time DMV? Well, the idea is it's actually not waiting for a resource. So technically, if you see SOS schedule, scheduler yield is not really a wait type. It's just an indication that the quantum has uh, completed and it's waiting for its turn again, waiting in the runnable queue, not really waiting for any resource, but just ready to run, waiting for its turn back on the CPU. And because it has to register for a wait type, it registers for SOS scheduler yield. So you will see the wait time SOS scheduler yield uh, increasing and summing up in the historical uh, SysDMOS wait stats DMV, but not real time in SysDMOS waiting tasks. Now, a higher value for SOS scheduler yield, what could that mean? Well, um, if you see this uh, number increasing, the wait time going really high, it simply means that you have long running workloads. One indication, the second indication could be that SQL Server is under pressure from a CPU perspective, which means uh, CPU is being choked by a lot of uh, long running workloads coming in and maybe even chatty workloads coming in. But those conclusions need to be derived and corroborated with a lot of other metrics that you have to collect. So let's not get into that. Let's simply understand about this weight type and this demo, which will show you the, um, the fact that it does not show up in SysDMOS waiting tasks. So let's get started with the demo. If you look on the screen, the first DMV that I'm showing you is SysDMOS wait stats. Let's select this and execute. 
and you will see that I'm filtering on SOS scheduler yield and right now I can see uh, an amount uh, some weight task counts there and the wait time 13k something let's go and clear this now with sysdmos weight stats um, dbcc sql perf statement and i've cleared the weight stats now remember not all the mvs can be cleared this way so this is an exception here let's go and select this and execute again and now you can see that for sr scheduler yield wait time in milliseconds is all zero everything all the values have been set back to zero now this is the real-time DMV, dim OS waiting tasks. And right now SQL Server is running in quiescent mode. So let's go and execute this. You will obviously not see any thread waiting on any wait type. Now I have this query um, on AdventureWorks. So there is a table called DBO transactions, which has a few million rows. And we are going to fire a select statement on this table and order by the attribute quantity. Let's go and take this and move this over to a new query window. Now, while I'm running this, I would want to open up the task manager also just to show you the CPU pressure. So if you see on this VM, there are eight logical processors right now, and you can see they're all nicely setting idle, not really doing much work. And the moment we start running this, and mind you, this particular query is going to run in parallel. Um, and I, just can ju I can just run this and show you the estimated execution plan for this one. So let's go and jump over to the execution plan and you can see that this optimizer estimates that this is going to run in parallel, which means that this workload is going to be given eight threads. And I'm purposely doing that just to occupy and keep all the processors busy. Remember, wait time for SOS scheduler yield will increase when there is CPU pressure. And I'm just trying to create a scenario where there is enough CPU pressure. So we are all set. Let's go and run this now. And while this is running, I am going to go to the task manager and show you that if you look at all the four, uh, all the eight boxes there, you can see they are pretty busy and CPU is currently choking at 100% utilization that's all happening now okay it's running now let's go back to our window here and look at SOS scheduler yield so when we look into the weight stats there remember this value was set to zero and now you can see this is set to 1600 it has increased to that extent and now threads are running but if you go to waiting tasks here you can see nothing at all on SOS scheduler yield but if I just remove the filter and I simply show all the threads that are waiting for something, you can see a lot of different wait types showing up there. Let's go and refresh this once more. And you can again see a lot of these wait types, but you will not see any thread waiting on wait type SOS scheduler yield. Let's go and run this and you can see it's not showing up. That's the crux of the demo here. What I'm trying to show you is that SOS scheduler yield is not showing up in sysdm OS waiting tasks. Let's do one more thing. Let's take this once more and stress SQL Server a bit more. So now I'm asking for eight more threads. Let's go and run this. It's running. Let's jump back to SO scheduler yield here. And uh, let's look at the wait stats and you will see the values out there. Now look at the wait time, 8784, 11,697. Keep an eye on wait time and it's constantly increasing, 15,000 now. But then if you go back to the waiting tasks again there, you will see no thread is waiting on SOS scheduler yield. But behind the scenes, threads are exceeding their four millisecond quantum. So there are at least 16 threads now because I have two workloads and both of them are using eight threads each in parallel. And all the threads, all the 16 threads do wait on SOS scheduler yield when their four millisecond quantum gets exhausted. Now. Both of these workloads are running just to finish up this query. Let me stop one of these, which I do not need anymore. And let's go back to the original one. And I also want to show you one more thing here. One, when this query completes is I will pull up the execution plan and go to the properties and show you that this workload, this, uh, the number of threads here did encounter, um, a lot of, uh, uh, occurrences of SOS scheduler yield, but I will have to wait for the query to complete. So let's do one thing. Let's pause the video and come back again when this job is done. 
pausing now. Okay, resuming again and the query is completed. Let's jump over to the execution plan and you can see this parallel plan which I had shown you earlier. Let's take the cursor over select operator, right click, go to the properties and here are all the weight stats that it has encountered. These are not the weight stats, not one, two, three, four, but if you expand here and you can see CX packet, then the second one, async network IO, and then third one, there you go. You have SOS scheduler yield there. And that's the total wait time and the number of occurrences about 22,000 for this single execution. Well, I wished there was a way to kind of expand all of them, but then another way is you could just right click and show the execution plan in XML and let's close the properties window. Control F here and search on SOS and there you go. You have the wait type SOS scheduler yield, 669 wait time in milliseconds and this is the count and you can actually see all of them, all the wait types that this query encountered in its lifetime. This is another quick way of looking into wait stats. Well, with this, uh, the summary of this demo, this video was simple enough. SOS scheduler yield wait type does not show up in sysdmos waiting task DMV. Uh, it of course shows up in the wait stats DMV. If you like the content, give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel and click on the bell icon so that you're notified on new videos. Most importantly, visit sqlmaestros.com. There's a lot of SQL learning resources out there. Video courses, master classes, lab kits, ebooks, blogs, hands-on labs, and a lot more. Follow us on Twitter, at the rate SQL Maestros, and myself, A underscore Bunsel. Last but not the least, do subscribe to our newsletters. See you soon in another video. Goodbye.